If you take all the individual values in the experiment and add them together and divide by the total number of individuals in the experiment, you come up with this thing here in purple, the grand mean. And I've put it on the graph as this line here. And you can see that there is variability in the data. And there are two sources of variability. The first is that there is a difference between the average survival times for each of the individual treatments or the individual cancers, that is stomach cancer here, and the grand mean. That's contributing to variability in the data. Same here for bronchus cancer. And finally, for colon cancer. Here's the mean of colon cancer and the grand mean. But that's not the only source of variability in the data. You can see that within each of the individual cancers, not all cancers actually have the same survival time. There is variability that can be expressed as either the standard deviation here or the variance. So what analysis of variance does is it partitions the variability in your data into its component causes. In this case, we've got the simplest form of analysis of variance, which goes in the different names. It's sometimes called univariate ANOVA, because there's only one thing, in this case, different types of cancer, which is affecting the average survival time. Or sometimes called the completely randomized design of analysis of variance. And it compares the variability, which is due to these differences in average survival time for the different cancers from the grand mean, with the variability that's due to what's called error. Now, in biological terms, error is basically a screw up. You put the wrong concentration of a component into a culture medium and screw up the medium, that's error. For a statistician, error is just unaccounted for variability. So in this case, we've got unaccounted for variability, which is affecting, for colon cancer here, the average survival time. So you can see that the bigger the difference between the treatment and the grand mean, the bigger the treatment effect is going to be. But also, because we are looking at a comparison of the size of these differences compared to the size of random error, then how fat these peaks are is also going to have an effect on the variance ratio. So we calculate a variance ratio of the overall treatment effect between the average for the treatments and compare that to the variability in the data. When we're doing this, we're assuming that each of these individual treatments has round about the same variability. That is, each of these three peaks is round about the same fatness. If they're not, it screws up the analysis of variance. Because for imagine that, for example, colon cancer had a big fat peak, then that will contribute a lot to the error variability, which is summed over all the different treatments. And that will cock up your analysis of variance. So we have to have this condition known as homogeneity of variance satisfied in order to have a valid analysis of variance. The second thing is that this, er this error here is all the unknown or unquantified sources of variability in terms of survival of cancer. So we know, before we even start this experiment, that, for example, if cancer spread to the lymph nodes, it's a worse prognosis. You'd expect people not to survive as long as those people where cancer hadn't spread to the lymph nodes. The size of solid tumours is related to prognosis. So, for example, if you can get cancers at an early stage where the cancers are very small, then you tend to have a longer survival time than 
if where the cancers are large. So if we can actually integrate these into the analysis as separate factors, so here we've just got different types of cancer contributing to the treatment effect. We could have a separate treatment effect which was has cancer spread to the lymph nodes. If we take that into account then we should sharpen up these peaks. So we're taking variability that we thought might be important out of the error variance, reducing the error variance and by doing that we're making this variance ratio bigger. So the treatment effects may stay the same but by sharpening up these peaks we're actually making the ratio of the treatment effect of the area, error variance bigger and we have a more powerful test and we end up with higher significance levels. So that's important to know.